the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, everyone. You are welcome to uh, a short reflection. I titled "Be Filled with the Holy Spirit." Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why the Holy Spirit? In the first place, the Holy Spirit is the third divine person of the Blessed Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God, is the engine room of God, the powerhouse, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. Now, why filled with the Holy Spirit? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Holy Spirit is a catalyst we need to do greater things. The catalyst we need to do greater things. Things like renew the face of the earth. It is when the Holy Spirit comes, when we receive the Holy Spirit, that we begin to do greater things. That we begin to operates in a different realm. You are power packed. You are bold. You, you are fe if you are fearful before, you don't fear anymore. You know, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Naturally, human beings, we are, we are so afraid. Jesus Christ, in, in different apparition to his disciples, he, you know, he, he calmed them down. Fear not. Do not be afraid. He said it so, several times in the scripture. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Fear not what to see. Fear not it is high. Yes. So the Holy Spirit removes fear. The spirit of boldness, not spirit of timidity. No. Now let's go to the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, in verse 1 to 13, and I read, When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing. And they filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious men who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, the light crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers speaking in his own language. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like these are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Persia, Media, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Greek and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, What does this mean? What others made fun of the believers saying, These people are drunk. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, we have heard about the descent of the Holy Spirit on Mary and the apostles. They were clothed with power. And they, 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 they began to do greater things. The same people who were locked up in an inn became bold, opened the doors and windows. They launched out and began to preach the gospel without fear, with boldness. And people marveled as to what has happened to these people, these weaklings. And they spoke to them eyeball to eyeball. So, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit hates dirty environment. The Holy Spirit hates sin and iniquity. For the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, you must be 
read or sing. And the Bible says that prayer of a sinner is an abomination before God. So, no wonder why the scripture also says the soul that sinned shall die. So the zeal to begin to do God's will, you need to have that zeal. You begin to break barriers with the Holy Spirit. You will be fearless when the Holy Spirit come upon you. They will give you names. People will begin to wonder why you are doing what you are doing. Some will see. They will accuse you of some other spirit you know, because they are confused. You know? In some places they will tell you if you go there, you will die. And you said you, you, you cannot die. And you go there. Places, for example, if you are in the city here, you travel to a village, they will tell you, you see so 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 place. Don't go near there. But if you are if you are if you are clothed with power, if you know you possess the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't fear. You go there and nothing will happen. You will know the truth. When the Holy Spirit comes, boldness will become the order of the day. And again, freedom. You are free from oppression, from every negativity. Hmm? You will know the truth and you will, say, you will tell the truth all the time without fear. Fearlessly. You become a storm changer. Yes. So, for to know more about the activities of those possessed by the Holy Spirit, you go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Then, 10, verse 8, Psalm 69. So, the book of Matthew chapter 10, from verse 26 to 33. And here our Lord there says, Do not be afraid. And for the spirit of the truth, uh, John 15, verse 20 to 27. The Spirit will bear witness. You can as well go to Romans chapter 5 from verse 12 to 15. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 15, yes. And then Psalm, Psalm 69, which I mentioned earlier. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 10 to 13. But well, let us go to, let us, let us read the letter of St. Paul to the Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 to 13. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is, because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. We know that in all things, God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. Those whom God has already chosen, he also set apart to, to become like his son. So that his son will be the first among many brothers. And so those whom God set apart, he called. And those he called, he put right with himself. And he shared his glory with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, we are weak in everything. But when we are clothed with power, when the Holy Spirit comes, He strengthens us. We don't even know how to pray. Sometimes, you see, you don't know where to start, how to channel your prayer. But with the Holy Spirit, He does it perfectly. You know, you have seen it from the portion we read. You know, that the Spirit searches our heart. He knows our heart more than we do. And He presents it to God. So we need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot even pray and pray well. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do things well. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be bold in whatever we are doing. So we need the Holy Spirit to invigorate us, to strengthen us, to clothe us with power. So we thank God and we pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit the spirit of a living God, to fall afresh on us, you know, with fire. So I pray 